Hi, my name is Keith Reed. Uh, this is my Radiator Springs uh, layout. Um, we can get started with it. We've got a uh, Tomatoes Junkyard with the uh, car impound lot. We got a uh, uh, Lightning McQueen there. He's got his little boot on because he can't drive away anymore because he's got to fix the road. Uh, moving on, we got Cozy Cones. Um, we got the, the broken down building that got turned into a racing museum kind of at the end of the first movie. Uh, Fillmore's uh, hippie tent there and his eco-friendly gas, as you want to say. Sarge's surplus. Uh, next building is Doc Hudson's um, medical facility, but he dies at the end of the, uh, in between one and two. So it's turned into actually the Doc Hudson Racing uh, Piston Cup Museum. Um, I had to switch it to that because they didn't actually make a Doc Hudson um, fig. So I needed a way to kind of represent that. So it's in transformation between his old uh, medical bay to the museum. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got Flo's V8. Um, and then across the street from that, we got the Raiders, Radiator Springs Curious, which is get all your junk and Route 66 uh, bumper stickers. Um, we got Casadel Tires there with the Leaning Tower of Tires. Uh, then moving on, we got Ramones, which is his body paint shop. And we actually look inside, we can see um, we can see Finn McMissile from Cars 2, as long with the Queen and a few other cars getting repainted. And then a little shot back to the first part of cars with the with the for sale buildings because the town's kind of gone bankrupt and not a lot of people are there. So we've got just some dilapidated buildings looking to get spruced up. And then moving on, we got the final, we got the town hall and the fire station there with Stanley, the town's founder, um, statue. And then a nice little Pixar throw in. We've got uh, Buzz and Woody and we've even got uh, Wally with the junkyard and a disintegrated uh, C-3PO in there as well. A little throw in for... Yeah, and then tra oh, tractor tipping at the very end with Tomato and McQueen there, so yeah, yeah. So you got the whole city layout here. Pretty much the whole city layout, yeah. So I saw the movie, um, thought, oh, that's really cool. I really like the Art Deco look of Route 66 and Radiator Springs, and I always like seeing different things, I'm like, and I always say, I'm like, that'll look amazing in Lego, that'll look amazing in Lego, so. And my wife always like says, she's like, you say that with everything, but I'm like, well, we gotta, we got to make it because this would be a really cool layout. Cars 3 just came out. This will be a, like a really good thing for everybody to see at BrickCon. So I'm going to try to hustle and make it for BrickCon, and here we are. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so this is this is really awesome. Talk about some of maybe your favorite techniques in here. One thing I noticed is the cones, the interesting shapes you had to do to, to get that technique. Yeah, so the cones were definitely an interesting one. When I got to that one, I was just kind of like banging my head on a wall. I'm like, how am I going to do this? I tried a few different techniques. I tried just using like the, the wing angle plates and trying to just kind of turn them in a, in a circle and try to mount them and see if I could get. I didn't really like it. There's too many gaps and stuff, and it didn't really sell a lot, plus orange doesn't really come in those wing plates a lot they're really unavailable and then I went to the uh, I think I'm gonna probably butcher his name wrong but the Orsville sphere uh, technique with the with the ball um, that he does with the with the Travis brick technique I went to that type of um, technique and then tried probably 20 different ways to, to get it done and then I finally came up with what you see in front of us so yeah and then trying to get the flatness on the front for the garage doors was another little add-in trick so but we eventually got it, so and I think it's, it's turned out to be everybody's little favorite uh, of the building so far because it really pops and stands out. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Another thing I noticed throughout the city, I think you did a great job with, is the signage. So you look at the way you built some of this. What what are the techniques you use to get the lettering right and everything in the signs on these buildings? Uh, so I used a, a technique that I borrowed uh, from a gentleman. I can't remember his name but it's just using all the plates and then measuring the four to five ratio of all the bricks and just turning all your plates sideways and using tile and plate to get all your lettering, which actually for the scale of what that turns into worked really well for the scale of my, uh, my display. Um, Ramones, I took the technique from uh, the palace cinema that they used along the sign to uh, write the, uh, the uh, is it palace it says down the side. But a few of the letters don't work in a two wide, so I just expanded it to everything to a three wide. Um, and then V8 and flows and stuff like that, just use basic shapes and hinges. Um, and uh, a lot of the other stuff, the lettering needed to be really too small, so I did cheat a little bit and get some stickers and have a little label maker, so printed them all out. But where I could, I tried really spelling out all the letters, and I thought it was very important to do the Welcome to Radiator Springs in a brick built Lego just as a as the entrance to the, as, to the display, so. 
Definitely. And I noticed some of those buildings you've got lighting in. How did you decide to do that? And what what did, what did you use to get the lighting done in there? Um, the lighting Ramones is actually just one of the IKEA strip lights. Um, we used the same one in the fallout shelter last year, if people remember that display. So I just put one strip in there. I figured because the Ramones has a lot of windows to itself and it's quite a big building and very kind of just one colored on the outside and I needed to make it more pop. So I tiled the inside and I put a few of the, uh, the figs in there. I also noticed when looking at some of the research that all along his windows, he's got um, hoods of cars painted in all different shapes and sizes, kind of as his advertising. So when I went on the display there, I made um, all the hoist to put all the different cars on with a table of all the paints. And then you can't, can't really see inside unless you light it up. So that's why I decided to put lights in there. And then Fillmore's is lit up too because he's, he's got the hippie tent. And in the TV show, or sorry, in the movie, it glows. It almost looks like the tent is glowing a little bit. So I needed a kind of way to to spruce that up a little bit too. And the geo uh, geo the geodome that is his tent needed to pop a little bit more. And I thought a light would actually help with that a little bit too. So yeah, I think I think that turned out great. What was your thoughts on the official Lego kits? I think they got a lot of mixed reviews when they when they released those kits a few years ago. So what did you think of those? Um, I thought a lot of them weren't. They could have been done a lot better. Um, especially flows like the V8 like. They got all the colors wrong. They kind of got the general shape with like the piston um, stacks and everything to, for like the the canopy of where they fill up the gas. And uh, and and her main building is like a, is a carburetor uh, filter, and they didn't even try to get anything round on there. So it's a little bit disappointing. The cars printing and the, their design, on the other hand, were done really well, especially in their first few series. The new Junior series, I think they kind of lack a little bit, but. Definitely without those sets, though, I wouldn't have been able to sell this as much as I could because those figs, there's no way to really build them as small and mini scale as they are without having them all printed and designed by Lego. So the cars, yeah, the cars are really good. The sets themselves that came with the cars, uh, not so much. So, yeah, I had to redo it and do them justice. And here we are with a with a bigger, better radiator spring. So. Exactly. When you bring this to a show like BrickCon to set it up, does, does it break down into sections to move it around easy? Yeah, yeah. So every building is just set in a, in a little it's self-contained uh, around the landscaping. So every building pops out of its little area. And then we just break the seams of all the landscape and stack them up. And then those all get stacked up, all the buildings go on boxes, and then we just take off all the uh, vegetation, all the trees, the signage, all the cars come off, um, all the signs to all the buildings, they all get stored away, and then that's how we transport it. So so it, it, it collapses a lot, but it doesn't collapse that much, and it's still about 20 boxes I need to transport it. So, yeah. Right. yeah. It's still a good haul down here. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, it took up, we have, a, we have an SUV, and it took up all of the SUV. So, yeah. And driving down to, because we were from uh, British Columbia, so from Squamish, and uh, driving down every little bump, I could hear a little bit of Lego shaking and rattling, and I was just cringing at every time. But everything's, the only thing that really came is Tomato's little building fell, fell down there, so, but that's easily put back together as Lego is, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think the layout turned out great, and I appreciate you talking to me about it. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much.